I didn't realize how much our state was connected to Canada's history. Not just mm-hmm. the country of the United States, but our state, Louisiana. What's good, y'all? It's, it's the Dumashats React, and, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, Steve? Today we're back with another American reaction. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down. Hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button and turn on the post notification bell. Because we're, we're on the road to 100K. Hey, and we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Canada, known for their delicious maple syrup, and being home to nearly all of the greatest hockey players of all time, is the second largest nation on earth, and with approximately 2 million lakes, contains over 50% of the freshwater lakes on the planet. For many thousands of years, this region was populated with many indigenous tribes of hardy people, capable of overcoming the severe and lengthy winters, thriving and developing unique cultures. The first non-native people to settle in Canada, oh, and the New World like in that. general that we know of for sure, were the Vikings. They built a settlement in Newfoundland, around 1000 AD. It is unclear for exactly how long this settlement was occupied for, or if there was more, but ultimately, it was either abandoned, pillaged, or its inhabitants succumbed to disease, or assimilated into the local population. But theories abound. Nearly 500 years later in 1497, the Italian explorer, Giovanni Capotto, was the first European to explore North America's coast, claiming it for the English crown. Shortly after, the Spanish and the Portuguese would do the same, but remained uncolonized for several decades, with only a few seasonal Portuguese and Basque fishing outposts built, until the French arrived. Jacques Cartier claiming the land for France in 1534. He named the Gulf and River after St. Lawrence's feast day on which he arrived. The French called the territory around the river Canada, after the native word for settlement. After several failed attempts at permanent settlement succumbed to starvation and disease, the cities of Quebec and Port Royal were successfully established. By 1670, the English colonies in the south had expanded, and new settlements were established in Newfoundland and south of the Hudson Bay. The fur trade particularly in beaver pelts, Beavers, became yeah. extremely lucrative as it became the favored material for hat makers and luxury winter coats. Yeah, I didn't know that they was using the actual fur from beavers, you know what I'm saying, at one point to, like, create their merch just like this, you know what I'm saying? That's new to me. That's new. Yeah, That's new. but, you know, just putting myself in the heads of the people from way back in the day, use what you got. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Hundred percent. Beaver. Italy yeah, encouraged further northern a beaver. settlement right. by both English and French fur trappers seeking to make a fortune. The French and the French English did not peacefully coexist, with the French temporarily taking much of the territory around the Hudson Bay during the lengthy period known as the Beaver Wars. Not only the Europeans became wealthy and influential from the trade in beaver pelts. The Iroquois Confederation of six powerful tribes, armed with European firearms, initially allied with Dutch merchants and then the English, to aggressively attack the French and most other Indian tribes in the region to obtain more furs. Many of these tribes banded together with the French to halt Iroquois expansion. Peace was negotiated after 72 years of fighting and many, mostly Indian lives lost. It's a long time. And little territorial change. The region of New France was comprised of several colonies. Canada and Louisiana were the largest, along with the smaller Placence and Acadia which the British Empire obtained from the French in the Treaty of Utrecht in 1713 in a complicated agreement concerning the War of Spanish Succession. France also recognized the legitimacy of the Hudson Bay Company's claim over Rupert's land. Interestingly, the Hudson Bay Company is still in existence today, primarily as owners of a retail store chain, bearing their name. Despite their larger territory, the French increasingly became outnumbered by the rapidly growing British colonies surrounding them by a margin of 10 to 1 by the time the next major conflict between the two occurred. During the Seven Years' War, or the French and Indian War, as it has become known in much of North America, French-speaking Acadians were deported far from the Canadian borderlands, some of whom formed the basis of much of the Cajun population of modern-day Louisiana and New Orleans. 
Both okay, English. But, 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 but that's not the only images that should have been shown, but okay. Mm. So y'all know that's where we're from. We're from Louisiana. Hey. Big facts. You know? Um, and I would love to share more about the C today's Cajun culture with you guys and Creole. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and French empires sent thousands of regular infantry to North America during the war, supported by local militias and Indian tribes. The greatly outnumbered French relied heavily on Indian allies and fought the British to a standstill early in the war, until the British successfully besieged the cities of Quebec and Montreal. Despite the French later defeating the British in a pitched battle, they failed to retake their capital city. It must have been a lot of Indians if they relied on them that much mm -hmm. to help them take over everything. Right. Man. And this was their land. They knew it better than anybody. Come on now. In the treaty that ended the war soon after, France ceded Canada to Britain while giving Louisiana territory to her ally, Spain. It is important to note at this time, much of North America's non-coastal areas were still largely unpopulated, with many of the native tribes heavily depleted through warfare and invasive diseases from which they had little immunity. Mm -hmm. With a population of approximately 3 million, the American colonies waged a successful rebellion against the British crown. A little over a decade later, Okay, so I, of course, you know, our countries are connected in land, but I, I didn't, with no, I need to word this correctly, because some Come of y'all be mm. like, Americans don't know our history, but we know a lot about um, the United States, not Americans, y'all know what I mean. Anyway, um, I didn't realize how much our state was connected to Canada's history, not just mm -hmm. the country of the United States, but our state louisiana yeah um of course i knew about the louisiana purchase i knew about you know um the french having being a french territory then being spanish territory and that's why we have a lot of french and spanish influences in our state in our food our cuisine our people all of that but i just didn't know i didn't put it together how much we were connected to canada because again we did not learn canada history right in schools <laughs> but there's a big relation there though yeah big relation the Americans attempted and failed to take Quebec, which remained loyal to Great Britain. After the war, many British loyalists moved north into Canada. During the following war of 1812, both British and American armies launched several failed invasions of each other's territory, ending in military stalemate and the status quo was maintained. The treaties following the war established a more formalized border between the two nations. Despite the Canadians' desire not to join their American neighbors to the south, movements for self-rule increasingly grew among the Canadian lower and middle classes, culminating in the rebellions of 1837 and 38 that were severely dealt with and crushed and saw the short-lived Republic of Canada established by William Lloyd Mackenzie. Despite the Republic's short-lived lifespan and diminutive size, widespread public support not only from many Canadians, both French and English speaking, but also from Americans to the South, spurred Great Britain's government to make major concessions in the rebellion's aftermath. The Act of Union in 1840 united Upper and Lower Canada into the new province of Canada, and the granting of responsible government soon after allowed for a far greater degree of self-rule to be exercised by the elected representatives of the people. In 1846, the disputed Oregon Territory was peaceably divided between Great Britain and the United States, pretty much by drawing a straight line and giving Vancouver Island to Canada. So Throughout the 19th thing. century, a massive boom in the logging industry fueled large waves of immigration to Canada, gradually replacing the fur trade. Yeah, I'm just happy he made a mention that it was a peaceful agreement. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody want to fight for things these days. Mm -hmm. But it was a peaceful agreement, and that's where that big old line came from, yeah. where everybody got their side and their side, you know? So, yeah, but I mean, yeah. they went through a couple wars. Oh, 72 years. That. And, and, then, and plus. Yeah, then set us ablaze, baby. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. As Canada's most lucrative industry. In 1867, the British North America Act, or more commonly called the Constitution Act today, established Canada as a self-governing democracy, with Ottawa as its capital city. To the west, the Hudson's Bay Company negotiated the sale of Rupert's Land to the newly formed Canadian government. The Métis people of mixed European primarily French and Indian ancestry, were the largest population of the Winnipeg area of what is now Manitoba. Fearing the land they had held for generations would be seized by newcomers from the east, they rose in rebellion, creating a provisional government. And after a tense standoff and eventual occupation by federal troops, many of their demands were met, respecting their rights. 
the leader of the rebellion, Louis Riel, would lead another larger but less successful rebellion, 15 years later, that ended with his trial and execution. Louis Riel became a martyr, or villain to many Canadians, his death increasing the tensions between Indian Métis, English, and French groups in society. Because of the key role the partially completed transcontinental railway played in the suppression of the rebellion, political support for completing it soared among English-speaking Canadians, and the railroad was completed in only four years from what it had begun. The 1890s saw the Klondike Gold Rush, in which over 100,000 prospectors set out to the remote Yukon region in hopes of striking it rich. Some did, but most didn't. After several decades of stagnant population growth, largely due to emigration to the United States, Canada's population sharply increased due to a good economy and high foreign immigration throughout the early 20th century. During the First World War, Canada, still a dominion of the United Kingdom, sent 620,000 troops to fight in Europe. 67,000 would die, while another 173,000 would be wounded. The staggering casualty rate grieved and shocked the nation. The war had a strong impact on Canadian nationalism and the desire to self-govern its own international affairs, which they obtained when the British Parliament passed the Statute of Westminster in 1931 which acknowledged Canada's co-equal status with the United Kingdom. Between the World Wars, Canada was hit particularly hard during the Great Depression of the early 1930s, with unemployment rates reaching 25%, and many men living in unemployment relief camps. During the Second World War, over 1.1 million Canadians served in that brutal conflict that left nearly 100,000 of them dead or wounded. In 1949, Newfoundland became the last Canadian province to incorporate in 1965, Canada adopted its current flag. Here's a selection of some of the other national flags that were proposed. Let me know in the comments of which one do you think looks best. In 1982, the Canada Act passed the Parliament of the United Kingdom. Here's a selection of some of the other national... Number four, will it be two? You know? I don't know what the three maple leaves would have been for. I, I like number one, three, and four. Number one, three, and four? Yeah, I'm not feeling... The other two. Well, number one is what they have. Yeah, I'm not yeah, that's the one they picked. But I'm just saying, like, if they had to pick out the other ones. These kind of make sense. These, these make more sense than the other two. These look like some yeah. somebody just clipped that on them. Right? <laughs> crazy. I, don't, I I mean, no, because the other two would be forever marked or until, you know. I feel like what with just the maple leaf, it yeah. gives Canada its own identity, regardless of it being connected to for number four. For number four? Number one. Saying, number one? Yeah, number one, three, and four. Three's hard, though. I don't understand what three would be. I don't know why they got the three leaves. What what like, what like would that stand for? I don't know. So mainly between one and four. Yeah, one and four. One and four is a gift, yeah. One and four. Maybe they could have changed. Nah. Nah. Okay. One and four. Flags that were proposed. Let me know in the comments of which one do you think looks best. In 1982, the Canada Act passed the Parliament of the United Kingdom and was ratified by the Queen, granting Canada the right to create their own constitution, which they promptly did. Still recognizing the constitutional monarchy in a mostly ceremonial rule, the new constitution abolished the British Parliament's remnants of influence over Canada. Canada is now a nation of over 36 million people where over 20% speak French as a first language, and has the 10th largest economy in the world. The province of Quebec has maintained a strong French influence over the centuries, oh. and has on two occasions voted in referendums to decide whether Quebec should proclaim national sovereignty and become an independent country. In 1995, it very nearly did not pass, with secession still being an issue till this day. This has been Epimetheus. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, what can these years and y'all still trying to break away <sighs> I, don't even, I don't i don't think i can make a comment about that that's just like a yeah they wouldn't be would they still be in the top largest I per, i'm pretty sure they'll still be in the yeah. top largest canada yeah largest i didn't know countries. i didn't know quebec was trying to dip on them like that we, either. we know that, that a, they was different it's, it's given some other locations who's trying to make some moves like that too now that like, quebec ain't the only one I, right you know what i'm saying so I'm just yeah yeah so this is cool learning about y'all yeah, you know y'all history y'all say we don't learn y'all history in school now there were some things that we learned in yeah. school y'all know it was a long time ago okay yeah. like we're younger millennials but we ain't that young 
All right. They don't go in too much detail, though, about the whole historic moments of what Canada had to experience. Yeah, you know? yeah, but, but this was the gist, so that was cool. Pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like to support the channel that way, as well as our reaction request form is in our description, description box below. below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.